What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Stephanie. Today, I have my July favorites for you. We got a bunch of makeup items, uh, a summer body product that I have been obsessed with, as well as my new favorite bra. Actually, like the entire outfit that I am wearing today. So before we get into it, if you haven't yet, please make sure to subscribe below. Come join the sisterhood. No matter your true pronoun or gender identity, come join the family. All right. Let's get started. I'm sure a lot of y'all have seen this in circulation. This is the brand new Pat McGrath Lab Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. I am in the shade Light Medium 9 and it is just like a really perfect match to my body right now. I have actually been getting a little bit tanner so it might be going one shade darker in a bit but when I matched this, it was absolutely perfect. This really recently came out, but I was able to get my hands on it, I think like two weeks before it was released and I got to try it out. This is the first foundation that I have really liked in a long time. You know, actually I haven't been using foundation at all. I've really been using uh, my Too Faced concealer, pretty much kind of like very thinly all over my face because I find that I don't like super full coverage foundations. And this one, you can actually apply it in a lot of different ways. You can apply it with your beauty blender and really thin it out and it just gives you a very skin-like texture. By the way, I have oily skin. It just like absorbs into your skin, doesn't sit on top of it. Um, but the method that I thought was very interesting and the first time I've ever really been able to do this is um, apply a foundation, apply this foundation, with my hands. One pump really does a trick with this stuff. I kind of warm it up on the back of my hand and start applying and rubbing it in. I feel like if you do this with any other foundation, it ends up just looking kind of grubby and it just, I don't know, it just doesn't work. But for some reason with this foundation, it just sits beautifully on the skin. Truly the texture of this foundation and the finish is so different than other ones. Because if you try to apply other foundations with your fingers like that, it just ends up feeling very tacky and kind of grubby on your skin. But this is almost like, I don't know, I wouldn't really necessarily say it's like a moisturizer, um, but it applies as easily as a moisturizer, but gives you coverage. In terms of a full face, I like really light coverage. This stuff is buildable though, because I have tried like two layers before and it does give you some real nice coverage. Also, I'm not wearing any concealer today. It's all this foundation. Um, what I did is I just kind of rubbed it more on the back of my hand. I feel like, you know, it's like you emulsify it, it kind of dries down a bit. Um, and then you just keep patting it on the places where you need a little bit more concealing. So I put it underneath my eyes and it's not like as full coverage as, you know, my like Too Faced Born This Way concealer, but sometimes that stuff is like, really intense to me. Like this is a really nice amount of coverage for me. So I put it underneath my eyes. Um, I put it on my chin, around my nose a bit where I have some redness and I'm just good to go. I honestly have nothing but really great things to say about this foundation. I will be doing like a get ready with me um, applying this so you can really see it in real time coming up very, very soon. But yeah, this stuff rules. Another item I've been loving from that same release is the powder. This is the Pat McGrath Lab Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Setting Powder in Light Medium 2. This is just a fantastic all around finishing setting powder. You can use this for baking. The way that I really prefer to use it is as the finishing powder because I always use uh, a powder to really matte out the face because I do get super oily throughout the day. Uh, and this kind of has a texture, I feel like kind of maybe like the hourglass uh, powder, if I were to compare it. It is finer, I believe, than Laura Mercier. And that's why I really like it for finishing. I just use a big old fluffy brush and put it all over the face and it just gives you a real nice, skin-like but matte finish. Um, but the really amazing thing about this powder is that it layers really well, like throughout the day. So I went to a Pat McGrath event um, during the release of these products and it was like a pretty hot day. And after we kind of got to see how she applies all these products, um, we got to try them out and one of their artists, he didn't even blot my face or anything. I was like pretty oily at this point because the event I believe was at like three o'clock or something or three or four. So I'd already had my makeup on like all day long, did not blot me and he just layered this stuff on top, um, which I typically wouldn't do, but I just wanted to see how it would work. And it just made my skin look so freaking nice. 
it didn't look caked. It just almost looked like my makeup was totally renewed, which I don't know what kind of witchcraft is in here to be able to do that, to like layer on top of my oil. Um, but that was super impressive to me. Personally at home when I've done this, I have blotted first and then applied the powder and it just really refreshes the makeup and it really makes it look like you just applied a, a, a full face. You know, I was trying to figure out which item I would recommend if you were to pick one thing from the collection. I think I would say the foundation because this one is like, the most different and impressive for me for like how I like my coverage and how I like my foundation. But also, I don't know, it might be tied actually. This and the powder. I also really like the uh, primer as well. So yeah, uh, again, I will be demoing all these items in a video coming up very soon. I've got a new brow product alert. This is the Hourglass Arch Brow Micro Sculpting Pencil in natural black. I have been waiting for Hourglass to come out with this product because before this, they also have the brow sculpting pencil, which is like a larger version of this. And the tip is kind of like triangular, but you can't get that super sharp brow like I do. So this one is really small and really slender. So you can just really get in there and define the brow. What I like to do with this is I like to go underneath the brows and define right underneath and then when it gets to the tip, I like to fill in at the tip and also fill in like maybe like two thirds, the back two thirds of the brow. And then today what I did is I went in with some powder and then I finished it off with a brow gel. The texture of a brow pencil is so important. It just has to be soft enough so that you're not like dragging in your brow, but not too soft so that it's like falling apart and kind of getting goopy in your brow. So this one is a really great texture. If you're looking for a brow pencil that gives you a lot of control and a lot of definition, you should look into this one. All right, we have another Pat McGrath product. Damn, I've been on a Pat McGrath roll. Her products are just so amazing. So this is the Pat McGrath Mothership palette. I believe this is the Mothership one. I just got my hands on this. I never got to use it before. And I have just really, really been loving a lot of these colors. So on my eyes today, I have this color, which is the second on the top. Pretty much it's all over my eyes. I use a fluffy brush to blend it out. And then I went in there with a regular eyeshadow brush and packed it all over and then pulled it underneath as well. You know, I'm very into just the one color all over eye look. I don't really mess too much with doing too many combinations. Pat McGrath palettes can be pretty pricey. It definitely is a very luxury item. But in terms of this palette, I use one, two, three, four, five of the colors regularly. Um, I do really want to experiment with this kind of like beautiful green shimmery color. I just have yet to really go into that. Her shimmers though and her highlighters are so unique. I've just never seen anything like them. I feel like in terms of any of the Pat McGrath palettes, I mean, at least currently, because I've used um, a few of them, this one is definitely up there. It might be my favorite one so far. Okay, moving on to the body product that I mentioned. This is the Sol de Janeiro Boom Boom Soul Oil SPF 30 sunscreen. It's interesting because I feel like I haven't seen any items like this on the market. I actually also haven't really heard anyone talk about this product too. This is amazing. It is a super shimmery, beautiful body oil with SPF 30 in there. Uh, Jen and I recently went to Lollapalooza and we doused ourselves with this stuff and I didn't get burnt for once. Not really for once. I mean, the thing is I tend to stay out of the sun quite a bit. Um, so when I have like one time where there's like a prolonged sun exposure, I'll get burnt like one time and then for the rest of summer I'm fine. But this was my prolonged sun exposure weekend and I did not get burnt. I even wore like spaghetti straps and my shoulders were totally fine. This is really the best of both worlds if you're gonna be in the sun for a long time I feel like, but you also wanna have that little shimmer on your skin. It is a really, really pretty shimmer. It is not sticky at all. A lot of these other products too, I feel like that are meant to be like a shimmery body product tend to have a little bit of like tackiness to them, a little bit of stickiness. This one is nice. It kind of rubs into the skin well and you don't feel kind of like you have to lift your arms up at all times. You feel a little gross. It really goes in the skin nicely and you get SPF 30. So 
yeah, you should definitely look into this stuff. I love it. I think Jen really liked it as well. Let's talk about what's on my body right now. I'm just gonna show you really fast, but there's gonna be B-roll shots. I, okay, let's talk about the, the bra first. <laughs> Uh, the bra is under here, but it is just sheer. This is my favorite bra right now. This is the first unlined bra that I have worn like ever. I have always been a little bit uncomfortable wearing unlined bras just cause my boobies are pretty big, you know? And I feel like I need more support. I don't know why I always just thought I needed to have some sort of padding, but that is not the case. Also, well, Lately, recently, I have lost a bit of weight, so a lot of that weight came out of my boobs, for sure. I think I might have gone down like, at definitely one cup size, if not like one and a half. Um, so it's kind of a bummer. Why can't why can't the weight just you know come out of other places that you want? Like you know, a little arm action, a little tummy action. It's always the boobs first for me. Always, always, always. But anyways, this bra is from. Adore Me. It is just a really sexy, lacy, unlined bra with underwire. And I have been wearing this like crazy. I've been wearing it with camis. I've been wearing it with t-shirts. It is so comfortable. The lace is just really, really soft. It's not an itchy lace at all. I find it's more comfortable than a lot of my padded bras, to be honest. So that's why I've been wearing it a ton. And it's very lightweight. I feel like after I started wearing this one, I realized how like hot I was wearing bras that are lined. And the bras that I wear are not like push-up bras necessarily. Like, I mean, I wear push-up bras sometimes for like a certain outfit, but I wear like pretty thin, um, lined bras that are like the uh, Notori bras. Those are ones I really like to wear, which are super comfy, but this one to me is like even softer and just like more free feeling. Um, even though there is an underwire, I mean, I'm just really used to underwire in general. Uh, this one just is really nice and comfortable. So comfortable, in fact, that I purchased it in white as well. To be honest, I think I might just go ahead and buy a couple more black ones <laughs> because the thing about um, really soft stretchy lace is that I'm afraid that it's gonna stretch out too much and I yeah I just don't want to be without this bra anymore this is definitely my favorite bra that I've ever purchased off of a dormy I have worked with a dormy in the past but this is not an ad for them this is just stuff that I bought with my own money and it was super worth it for me um, the other item that I really have been wearing a lot is this cami I've actually been wearing this cami for months and months and months, maybe even like at least a year. This has been my favorite cami and I just have never mentioned it. This is by Maje. Maje? Yeah. And it is just a really nice, I don't know what material this is. It's like a crepey material. I think that's in the name, something about crepe. Um, it has this really pretty lace edging. It actually goes down more down here, but my bra, obviously, you can see my bra there. Um, to me, just a really, really nice, Cami that I wear underneath a lot of things. If I have like a jumpsuit that goes a little bit too far down, I just want something under there, put this one in there. Again, I like this so much that I just bought it in white. I actually bought the white um, bra and this white cami at the same time, but I tried wearing it together. You could definitely see my nipples, which I don't know. Is that a big deal? I might try it out sometime, but I might just wear the black bra with the white cami. And I think that might be, that might still work out. But yeah, if you're looking for a really nice cami, this is great, it is pricier, but I have seen sales recently uh, for Maje. This is just worth it for me because I wear this thing like all the time. Actually, if you have any camis that you could recommend for me, please let me know. I'm always on the search for a nice like lace cami that is good for like a larger chest. I've definitely got my hands on a bunch of different camis or slips and it's always like too tight across the chest. It just doesn't work out. And this one, because it's kind of looser like this, um, it just really works out for me. So if you have any recs for camis and slips, I'm always on the hunt for that as well. Like any sites that you recommend, please send them my way because I want to buy them all. Okay, last item. Oh my God, I just keep getting them. Are these jeans. <laughs> these are the jeans. They are A Goldie jeans. And I've been wearing this whole combo 
like crazy. These are my favorite, favorite blue jeans now, perhaps of all time. These are just really nice high-waisted uh, jeans. I am 5'2", pretty petite person, and the jeans hit me like right at the waist, at the perfect place. I feel like that's a really difficult thing to find sometimes with jeans. Obviously, like depending on your height, certain brands are gonna fit you better. I've talked about A Goldie a lot at this point because it is the perfect kind of fitting jean for my body. So if you are a short person, a petite person, like look into A Goldie because it really, really fits my body so well. These are like a pair of straight leg, classic denim, no stretch. At least I don't believe, yeah, there's no stretch in these jeans at all. Then um, they hit at my ankles at a perfect spot where I don't have to roll them up. Like that's amazing to me. Or I don't have to get them altered. Um, yeah, if you're just looking for a really straightforward, great pair of jeans, blue jeans, black jeans, all of them, check out A Goldie. All right, y'all, that is it for my July favorites. Thank you so much for watching. Also, if you didn't see it already, I just posted my latest episode of Sex Marts which is my episode on masturbation. It's a video that I honestly could never imagine that I would film in a million years, or at least when I was younger, but I'm very happy to be more open about this. And I'm starting to get very excited and passionate about sex marts because it's just something that I think that we need to talk about and like spread true information um, in terms of sex ed and all those things. Although I am gonna be doing some more fun ones that I feel like are not as educational, but just stuff like on, I don't know, online dating. I wish I could do a whole video um, for like, like tips for dudes on these apps because I'm sure a lot of y'all have seen these, these guys need help. They need help on their profiles and they need help on like how they approach a woman or another person. Cause sometimes, like recently this has happened to me, I have like matched with somebody, I thought they were really cute, and then they just said something like so gross and like skeezy that it just turned me off so much that I just deleted them. Come on people. I'm sure that is an experience that a lot of y'all have been through. I wonder if I could just like screenshot and just, you know, take out their names and blur their photos. Oh, I don't know, that would be really funny though. Okay, anyways, <laughs> that is it for my July favorites. Please make sure to check out my latest episode of Sex Marts. If you haven't yet, please subscribe below. Come join the sisterhood. I love y'all and I will see you in the next video. Bye.